Hey guys, so today we're going to look at how to rationalize the denominator. When we have an irrational number or a third or a square root on the bottom and a square root and a third are the same thing here. So if we have square root two or a square root three on the on our denominator or on the bottom of a fraction, then we need to get rid of that. We only want the thirds or the square roots to be on the numerator or the top of the fraction. Okay, so there is a way to do that and it's called rationalizing the denominator. So let's see how we can do this for different types of questions. So remember that a third and a square root and an irrational number are all going to be the same thing here. So our first type of question will be when you get something like this. 3 on the square root of 2. Now, if we have 3 on the square root of 2, we know we've got a square root on our denominator or on the bottom, and we don't want that without when we have our final answer. So when questions ask you to leave your answer with a rational denominator, they want you to get rid of this square root on the bottom. We only want the square root on the top. Okay, so how do we get rid of it? Well, if we times the bottom by the square root of 2, and we times the top by the square root of 2, because whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top, we can see here that the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the same as the square root of 4, and we know that the square root of 4 equals 2. So if you just times the third or the square root by itself, then you just end up with a number on the inside. So here, we're going to end up with 3 square root 2, because that's 3 times square root of 2, over 2. And now we don't have a square root or a third or an irrational number on the bottom. So now we have a fully rationalized denominator. What's another type of question that you can get? Well, you can get one where you, that looks something like this. And I'll put 3 on the top again. We have 3 and maybe we have root 5 on the top as well. It doesn't matter that we have a third on the top. We're only worried about the bottom. So if we have 3 root 5 over 2 root 2, again, I've got the 2's okay on the bottom, but we want to get rid of the square root of 2. That's an irrational number. And an irrational number, guys, is just where you can't express that number as a fraction or as a whole number. If you put that in your calculator, that will come up with an infinite decimal, and that means it's irrational. So to get rid of this, what can we times the bottom by? Well, you don't have to times it by 2 root 2. We don't have to times it by the whole bottom when we just have one term here. That's just one term. We can just times it by square root of 2 again. Even though there's a 2 there, if we just times it by square root of 2, they that will become 2. And then the 2 there, remember, has a times next to it. We'll just multiply by that. So it will still be rational at the end. And because we times the bottom by the square root of 2, we're going to times the top by the square root of 2. And remember, if you have two terms on the top, make sure you use a bracket. So I'll put a bracket here anyway. We know that we've got to times the square root of 2 by everything inside the bracket, which here is just 3 root 5. So we know that when we're times in these, we do 3 times 1 because there's a 1 on the outside of the third. So it's just 3 root 5 times root 2 is the square root of 5 times 2, which is the square root of 10. And so that is going to be over 2 times, what's the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Well, when we square a square root, we just end up with a number inside, which is 2. So that's going to equal 3 root 10 over 4. So now we don't have an irrational number or a third on the bottom. We just have 4, which is rational because it's a whole number. So you can see with these two examples, 1 and 2, where we just have one term on the bottom with the square root, we just times it by the square root. Do not times it 
by this number next to the square root as well because you do not need to. Okay, so that's how you do rationalizing the denominator when we have one term on the bottom. But let's have a look at what happens when we get two terms on the bottom and one of them or both of them are square roots. So let's say that we have, and we'll make this number three, four plus the square root of three over three plus root two. Now we can see that the three is rational on the bottom, but the root two is irrational because it's in that square root. So it's a third. So to get rid of this, what we did last time, you probably think that we would just times the bottom by the square root of two. But when we have two terms on the bottom, and remember we should always use brackets around these because we've got to times everything by this outside number, this actually will not get rid of the thirds completely because if we times three times root two, we end up with three root two plus root two times root two is two. So we've the root two just moves to the three. So it's still irrational. So instead of doing this, we're actually going to do something else. We're going to times the bottom by exactly the same bracket, except we're going to change this sign. So if that's a plus, we're going to make it a minus. But everything else is going to be exactly the same. It's three minus the square root of two. And times in this bracket by exactly the same bracket, but with a different sign in the middle, is actually called the conjugate. This bracket is called the conjugate because it's identical except for the sign. And because we times in this bottom bit by three minus root two, we've got to times the top by three minus root two. And remember, it is so important that you use brackets around the top and the bottom when there's two terms or more. Okay, so let's do the top first. We know that here we've got this bracket times this bracket. So we've got to expand one by one. We've got to times four by everything in there. And then we've got to times root three by everything in there. So we'll do the top here. What's four times three? 12. Four times minus root two is minus four root two. Root three times three is plus three root three, and root three times minus root two is minus root six, because we just times what's inside the square root. And that's over again. Why did we do this? Why do we make these brackets exactly the same except for the sign? Because we're going to be doing a difference of two squares. If you can remember the difference of two squares rule, when we have x plus y, x minus y, we get x squared minus y squared. So we're just going to do square this term and square this term. And because we're squaring both of them, we know that all the square roots are going to cancel. So here, we're going to do on the bottom, 3 squared minus the other term there that's in the bracket twice, root 2 squared. And I'll just do the answer over here and that's going to equal. Now we can't simplify any of these top terms as you can see. So we'll leave the top exactly the same. Plus three root three minus root six. And that's going to be over. What's three squared? I'll just write it below is nine. And what's root two squared? What's root two times root two? Well, we know that is two and we just minus them to get seven. So look, now we have a rational denominator. There is no more square root on the bottom. And remember, we did that by times in whatever two terms are on the bottom by their conjugate, which is, means you times it by the exact same bracket, but change the sign because that allows you to use this difference of two squares rule where you get to square both of the numbers and therefore get rid of any square roots because that is the opposite. Okay, so the last example we'll be looking at is where we have two square roots on the bottom. And I'll leave that rule there so we can use that for the next one. 
Okay, so for, for our fourth example, our last example, this is the last type of question. And this one is another one where you have two terms on the bottom. Remember where you had one term on the bottom? You only have to times by the square root, not the number next to it. But with these, these ones where you have two terms, you times by everything on the bottom, but change the sign in the bracket. Okay, so let's say we had 2 over... 4 root 3 minus 2 root 2. Now we've got two thirds, but the process is exactly the same as what we just did last question. Again, because I've got, wherever I've got two terms in this, I'm going to put brackets around. Here, I've only got one, so I don't need to use a bracket. And I'm going to put another set of brackets next to it because I'm not going to be times in this by just root 3 or root 2. I'm going to be times it by the exact same thing but I'm just going to change the sign. So I've got 2 root 2 or there, and instead of a minus, I'm writing a plus. So they're almost exactly the same. And again, this is called the conjugate. And because I'm times in the bottom by this bracket, I've got to times the top by this bracket. And I'm just going to put the bracket next to the 2, so we know we can just expand in the next step. Okay, so now that we're times in both the top and bottom by the same thing, we go to the next step. And we're just going to go 2 times this and 2 times this, which gives us 2 times 4, 8 root 3. Remember, the 2 only is times in the outside of these thirds because it's not in a square root itself. So we get 2 times 2 root 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 root 2. And that's going to be over 4 root 3 squared minus the other term squared. What's the other term? 2 root 2. So I just put that in this bracket and square it. I've just put both of these terms in this bracket and squaring them and then I'm going to minus them because of this rule. Because I set them up like x minus y, x plus y, which is the same as this. And we know that that equals x squared minus y squared because of difference of two squares. So I'll do the answer over here. We know that this equals 8 root 3 plus 4 root 2 over, now when we square these, because there's two numbers inside, we've got to square both of them. You've got to square everything inside this bracket because there is an invisible times between these. So what's 4 squared? Well, that's 16. And what's root 3 squared? Well, root 3 times root 3 equals 3. So I'm going to leave that in a bracket. And that's going to be minus in 2 squared, which is 4, times root 2 squared, which is 2. So we get as our answer, 8 root 3 plus 4 root 2 over 48, 16 times 3, minus 8. And that is going to equal 8 root 3 again. We'll just keep right in the top to make sure we don't miss anything. Over 40. Now there is one last step to finish this question. Now that we've got a rational denominator, can you see what the last thing we have to do is? We have to factorize the top because we can see that there are some common factors. So what we're going to do is we're going to write underneath that this equals, and we're going to factor the top, what are 4 and 8 both have in common? Well, they both have 4. So I take out the 4, and I'm going to fill it in with 2 root 3, because 4 times 2 root 3 equals 8 root 3, plus root 2, because 4 times root 2 equals 4 root 2. And that is going to be over 40. Four, and now I can simplify this fraction here. Because 4 is sitting on the outside of the bracket and times in the bracket, I'm allowed to simplify these. What goes into 4 and 40? Well, 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 40 10 times. So that's how we get our final answer of 2 root 3 plus root 2 over 10. And I'll just move that up for you guys.